Thing, just straight off the plane and into the jam. That's the sign of a true professional. Oh, stop it. So welcome to Guildford, Tora. Thank you so and much. And it's a brilliant you. to finally get to meet you in person as same. opposed to just watching you on YouTube. Yeah, same. Um, so as is the way with these kind of, uh, kind of Captain Meets interviews, we're going to uh, delve into your past, mm -hmm. um, what it was that inspired you to play the guitar and what you're doing musically, talk about your new album yeah. and sort of, you know, the journey and how you got there. Yeah. Um, and for anyone that's not familiar with you, yeah. tell us what your strange accent is. <laughs> well, I'm Norwegian. Yes. Yes. Uh, born and raised in the middle of Norway, uh, out by the coast, uh, small town. Yeah. Well, and so growing up in Norway then, yeah. what where were your sort of musical influences coming from? Was it was it a musical family or were you just, you know? Yeah, it was. It was a musical family. Extremely. Okay. Yeah, my Tell us about them. Yeah, my sister is a jazz singer. Mm -hmm. And my brother is a guitar player. And my father is a music teacher. Ah, cool. Yeah, so it was music all the time in the house. And we spent our weekends just traveling around and uh, watching my sister perform. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was like, that was like my youth, you know, growing up backstage. And also on stage. What kind of stuff does your sister do? Oh, musicals, concerts, um, everything. Yeah. Okay, and she's a lot older than you, is she? Or yes. That's, that right? 15 years. Oh, wow. Okay, so yeah, you can certainly, I can see now when you're a kid going around. So she'd have been, you'll have remembered then, I guess, growing up with all, her already having a career as a, as a musician. Yeah. So it was like um, doing music uh, as, as your job. Uh, I w that, that was normal for me, mm -hmm. you know, it, it made sense. Mm -hmm. So I thought every child had it like that, you know, that it was normal to be a musician, but it's not. No. 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 Uh, and I wanted to do something completely different because it was so normal. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to like make my parents mad because that's what we want to do, you know. <laughs> so I wanted to do something completely different for yeah. many years. Yeah. So I didn't start doing music like for real until I was 15 mm -hmm. years old. Maybe. Yeah. So I, I love that. Um, I sometimes think, I sometimes worry that the guitar won't be as popular for young, you know, teenagers growing up today because it doesn't feel as rebellious as it used to. You yeah. know, if you, if you go back into the 60s, every parent in the 60s would be terrified, I suspect, of their yeah. children <laughs> going, I'm going to do a Beatles or a Rolling Stones or Elvis Presley or whatever like that. Yeah. But it sounds to me... I'm interested as to why you thought that the guitar would be rebellious for you because it sounds like your family were already kind of quite accepting or was it they yeah. stylistically weren't into the kind of music you wanted to do? No, they, they were never mad. They were always supportive. It was right. nothing like that. But I think it was like... <laughs> oh, no. like Come again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like they... it was expected and was not surprised if I started doing music right you know it was like that was what I su was supposed to do mm -hmm. and I, so shouldn't you to have been a proper rebel shouldn't you have been like an accountant or a yeah know, of a course I'm, but I'm not smart <laughs> enough <laughs> so who were, the, who were the artists then at the time that you were listening to and, and thinking uh, you know wanting to you know and, and what was it of all the instruments you could have learned to play what was it about the guitar well um, 
to, to be honest, I've never had like any guitar heroes mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm a big fan of great entertainers. Mm -hmm. And I, I also consider myself as an entertainer more than a guitar player, mm -hmm. really. But uh, Michael Jackson was my, I'm like, I think I'm Norway's biggest Michael Jackson fan. And I'm, <laughs> that's not a joke. Ask anyone I know, I think that's the truth. <laughs> and also Beyonce and Stevie Wonder I love. Right. Everything from Old Town, really. So, but uh, with the guitar, I think it was, it's, I love rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. that's, I, I love it. And the guitar is, you can do so much with this instrument, you know, you can, you can just go. Yeah, and, and, you, and there's a groove there. Yeah, and you can yeah. do the whole Mayer thing and, and play melodies and chords. It's like so much in one instrument. And for me, just to sing wasn't enough. Right. Yeah, so. Well, that's, so, that's interesting then, isn't it? So, you were, uh, inspired by artists that I guess were probably yeah were known for their singer-songwriter and, and yeah. entertainer sort of stuff mm -hmm. um, so how then does that how do you how does that affect the way you approach you know either writing songs or live performances or whatever on the guitar when, when you sort of think of there aren't many I'm thinking of people like Prince maybe mm. you know aren't mm. many sort of frontmen guitar player mm. people that transcend that kind of big performance entertainer mm. um i'm trying to think well, you, you know, yeah who, who else might there be a prince is a great example mm. absolutely and i think a lot of guitar player has a way of like going into their guitar and staying mm. there during mm. a show and but i think what i want to do is if i have a guitar solo i automatically go to the front of the stage and I look the audience in the eyes while I'm playing mm -hmm. so they understand what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. They can't look away, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I'm not trying to show off like, oh, uh, listen to this lick that I learned yesterday. That is mm -hmm. super hard. Mm -hmm. That's not my goal in any way. It's yeah. just to make them feel like they're on stage with me and just having a, a good time. And that's important to me. Yeah. yeah. So, so when was the first um, actual band that you put together and that first taste of audience interaction that you thought, okay, I'm hooked now, this is what I need to do. <laughs> well, it was the band that I'm playing in right now, actually, okay. more or less, uh, and we were a, a trio. Mm -hmm. Me on guitar and I also uh, uh, sung and there was drums and bass and we just made up <laughs> these funny songs, you know, with cool guitar riffs and it yeah. was groovy and funky and and we played some few gigs around and, and people, I, I noticed that people liked it. I think maybe seeing a girl in front with a guitar, mm -hmm. electric guitar, playing mm -hmm. guitar solo mm -hmm. was like, what? <laughs> Is this real life, you know? Is this possible? Mm. So I, I just kept on doing that. That's an in interesting choice of words there. You, you said, Does it, is this possible? Yeah. Did it, does it still, did it feel like that at the time that it, that it wasn't uh, either po well, possible was was your word, but you know yeah. I don't know other words. Maybe a, like did, did, did it did it just feel odd, you know, to be a female front person playing the guitar? Not for me. No, I didn't think about it until people started telling me that I should think about it. Right. So, uh, yeah. So now uh, when I do um, interviews in in Norway, it, that's always a question. Mm. You know. What is it like to be a girl? And especially I play the blues mm -hmm. and in the blues, uh, what do you call it, uh, environment or the blues people are usually male mm -hmm. and old, <laughs> 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 to be honest. Well, it is, in Norway, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's like my gang, you know? That's who I hang out with. I, I, I'm always really conscious to try not to ask that question mm. because I kind of think it's just, if everybody keeps saying, so is it weird being a girl that plays guitar? Mm. It will never stop being yeah. a question. That's right. Uh, and my, I've got two girls and you know, I, I kind of hope that by the time they get to their teens or whatever, um, people just don't ask the question anymore. But yeah. I, I, I guess right now it, it's, it's like you say, I, I think most women that, that start to play guitar probably are like you. They, it's not a problem mm -hmm. until someone says it's yeah. a problem, <laughs> yeah, and then that's it's like, right. you know, which is kind of crazy. So if we all just all make a concerted effort to stop <laughs> going, so is it difficult to be a lady playing the guitar? Then yeah. it, it just won't be. Um, that's right. I, I liked the, um, you know, when you, you were talking about really trying to connect with the audience when you're doing a, a sort of a live show, 
Um, was that again something that just felt natural to do right from day one? Because I, I, I can imagine, I mean, certainly me as a guitar player, I, I, I really don't mind sort of YouTube land, but in normal gig land, even if there's like 10 people, mm. I'm, I'm quite introverted as, yeah. a, as a player, but and certainly on the videos I've seen of you, um, you're, you're not introverted no, at all, no. you know, the opposite. <laughs> no, yeah. So where, where, does that, um, where does that sense of uh, confidence and come from, you know? Uh, the, the confidence, I don't know. That's, that's just something I'm lucky to have in, in that part of my life. And mm -hmm. I'm very grateful. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think uh, being on stage, is, it's like being home for me. Okay. Yeah, it, I, I'm not scared. Right. Like normal everyday situations can make me really scared, like birthday parties and, <laughs> and such, where like 10 people are supposed to talk about things, I can freak out and be weird. But if you put me on stage, I can be super cool. So, but, it, but it's the fact that it's home to me. I grew up right. on stage. Do you have, is it like a split personality thing? Is it yeah, just absolutely. like tour of the performer is different to tour of the yeah. person you'd meet in? Well, it that, is. And that's just, I wonder, I, again, I, I, I bet we, we probably, I don't think that's that uncommon, is it? You know, people almost have these sort of alter egos that they can take on stage and be these larger than life characters and yeah. then off stage they're completely different. Yeah. So how, how long has the band been going then? You know, how long have you been touring for and, and, and where's the, you know, how's it sort of ramped up in terms of success? Uh, we um, started the trio, I think maybe 10 years ago, mm -hmm. something like that. And we have, um, uh, added some more musicians, including my brother, who is mm -hmm. now uh, playing guitar, and he's also the producer mm -hmm. of our music. And um, it's just been a process of, you know, getting time to practice together because we all moved to different parts of Norway, mm -hmm. and we kind of split up. We just made an EP that was like, we're gonna make this so we have something that maybe people can remember us by, because we had just been playing, you mm -hmm. know, shows and everything, festivals. And, and we recorded the EP and I was like, thank you guys, it's been fun. Oh, really? But then uh, that EP was kind of popular, you know? So it's like, we can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> we have to keep writing and keep doing things. And, and I love to work. So I was right. like, boom, 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 boom. Let's get on it, you know? Uh, so after that EP, we played a lot of great festivals in Norway. And I think, and we changed our name as well from, oh, this is embarrassing. <laughs> oh. Come on. Oh, okay. I've heard some great band names. So really? Let's hear yours. Come on. Are you prepared the, for the this? Best one, I'll tell you the best one I've heard after you've talked. I don't even know if it works in anything other than English, but go on, you tell me what's yours. Okay, fine. So we were called uh, Bad Influence. And I know it doesn't, it's not the worst, mm -hmm. but for me it's the worst, absolutely. So we changed it to Tura. Fair enough. Why so not? should I be so Tura? So I should. So it's, it's more like if it was pronounced in English, it'd be more like T U R A. No, uh, no, uh, Tora English and in Norwegian Tura. Fine. Yeah. Okay. You got it. Well, the worst or best band name ever I heard recently. Yeah. Give uh, it. Was the uh, Jehovah's Witness Protection Program. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was just absolutely the best <laughs> amalgamation of two kind of... Uh, no. Anyway, there you go. So if you're watching, this was... Uh, I can't remember the dude now who's... I know, Jacko's son it was, but I can't remember what his name was. So sorry, Jacko's son, but yes, you have the coolest <laughs> band name ever. Um, so I'm interested this idea that you're um, kind of workaholic. Mm -hmm. With an, when I say workaholic, it, is full time is your band now, or are you holding down a regular job as well? No, I study. St oh, okay. Music in right. Oslo. Yeah. Okay. Um, so tell me about how difficult it is to try and keep a band going when you all live hundreds of miles apart. Mm. Um, and do you have a sort of an old school approach to getting the band together and rehearsing stuff, or are you using technology to share parts and write music and? Yeah. Well, I, I write, uh, uh, write every, all the music with my brother mm -hmm. and uh, I travel a lot to where his studio is uh, and we work together there and then I leave again mm -hmm. and then he sends me his ideas and that's how we work really, just me and him. Mm -hmm. And then we include the band and just go play that or, <laughs> you know. <laughs>
but keeping it together is always hard and, and keeping the the guys motivated mm -hmm. you know it's i can never be like mad i have to be happy all the time you know <laughs> oh yeah this is going to be fun come on come on let's do this let's do this because yeah. um money is always a thing you know of course uh, and it's expensive mm -hmm. to play in a band <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in the beginning yeah yeah so i think it's just uh, keep it rolling and getting good gigs mm -hmm. and don't care about the the money just this is going to be fun and have a great time really uh, that's great advice as well that that was the turning point a mm. long time ago when i was playing it was when it was when the gigs stopped being the fun gigs and yeah. they were just the well paid gigs yeah and then it's just and then you are just like man mm. i can't cope with another nobody nobody turns up to you know, nobody really wants to see the band. You've just been employed by some entertainment firm that no, think no. they want a band. They think they want a band, and yeah. I was much happier just doing all the free gigs. But then mm. I, I guess if that's all you do for a living, free gigs don't <laughs> pay the bills, do they? Yeah. No, I I do paid gigs as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, that's me. Right. Yeah. So you just have like a solo. Uh, thing that you do or just a, uh, still a band is it or yeah well I can do our songs you know yeah. or I, I'm hired to sing three songs with a professional band somewhere and yeah. for a company or something you know those kind of gigs right so you're mixing yeah. up sort of session stuff and yeah. more just cover stuff and then your own band yes and that's I guess that's the best way is it to try and keep the uh, the money kind of you know, yeah. so that you can survive so you can eat that's the thing. That's the thing. So uh, yeah, I, I try to, to mix it as well as I can mm -hmm. and do both. But I need my band and I need that project that I love and, yeah. the, and the people that I love, you know? Yeah. Uh, if, if, if I lost them, I, I couldn't keep going. So, so tell me about the, the new album that's come out this year. Yeah. Is that, the is that the first full format album that you've done other than the EP? Or is yeah. this? It is. So it is. what was that? Uh, how long was that in, you know? Uh, being created for before you know and tell, tell me about some of the just how, how long it took and the creative process and yeah all sorts really just you know how does anybody just release an album now you know with presumably no support from a, a label or anything like yep. that just all your own effort well uh, it's um, it's a long process I think maybe two years Wow yeah um, and um, it, it, it's it's about getting the good songs you know and getting the the right chorus and getting i think me and my brother when we we're working on our music it's like does it feel good mm -hmm. yeah okay let's do that <laughs> you know we don't listen to uh, different types uh, of music and go we want something like that we don't do that anymore mm -hmm. we just do you agree yeah okay then this is cool okay and we work in the studio he's doing the logic thing <laughs> i was like what and i'm sitting next to him and that's how we work and record and sing and do ideas. Well, you, you start with a do you start with a, a vocal line or have you got a riff or what, where does it or is it all a mix? I, I I love to just have maybe one chord. Right. If I'm and because then I can sing over it. And um, yeah, I um, as few chords as I can really. That's so sim the thing. simple chords. Yeah, absolutely and. We have one song that's called The Feeling Good, mm -hmm. and it has three chords through the whole song. Uh, uh, I have sound here. That's, that's the whole song, mm -hmm. three and a half minutes, that's all it is. And we have an intro hook, we have a verse, we have a chorus, we have a guitar solo, all of those things. Yeah. And, um, and I think if you listen to our album, you will find that there are very few chords. But that's for me to be able to to play with my lines as a vocalist. Because mm -hmm. I think guitar when I'm singing and I think singing when I'm playing guitar. So it's, yeah, that's the fun part. Tell me, explain that a bit more. So you think yeah. of singing whilst you're playing the guitar. Yeah. So you're trying to make your guitar sound like a, a vocal line. I try my best, yeah. And then, and then when you're, sorry, when you're singing, mm -hmm. you're... I've got this confused now. You're thinking about the guitar, so you're yeah. you're trying to sing what you might play on the guitar. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Do, do you approach this from a? I know you said you've obviously studied music for a long time. Do you approach this sort of theoretically? In other words, sort of knowing what harmonies or what intervals might 
work over certain chord structures or is it all well, sort of just experimentation and feel and see what happens? Uh, I'm probably the worst student in the world. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I, I, music theory, from, I, I, I know the basic and, yeah. and that's it. So I never think theory. I think right. boxes and shapes and colors. Right, okay. So many colors. Yeah. What? G is green. G always. is green. I was, about, I was about to say, so give me, you know, what are you sort of, you're putting together, you're decorating a room or putting an outfit together, are you? And they're the colors and that's what makes the song or what's the... Oh, I don't know. Sometimes it's about <laughs> uh, if you have a set list on our show and maybe a song called Alone is song number three, then it's brown. Next night it's song number seven, then it's yellow. What does that give it a sort of a happier I, or a sadder kind of it, intonation? Or? I don't know. It's like the mix of numbers and colors and shapes. I, it's, it's very strange. I love creative. It people. only makes sense in my head. Exactly. So this is all this like crazy mash of noises and colors and everything yeah. that makes a song at the end. It's it's awesome. Yeah. It's all awesome. It is. Um, so was the is the the album. Uh, the same band all the way through? Have you got guest appearances or...? Well, we have guest appearances uh, on uh, bass and also organ. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think it's the band, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's very cool. And is is each song, you know, does it follow a, a, a traditional sort of guitar-y kind of vibe? So, you know, sort of like verse, chorus, verse, chorus, guitar solo. You know, do you try and do a solo in every one? Or is it just if it feels right, you do, and if you don't... Yeah, we, <laughs> we, since me and my brother both are guitar players, yes. it's easy to go like, okay, after the bridge, what do we do? <laughs> well, <laughs> I can give you an idea. So it came to a point where we had, I think we had guitar solo on every song. And I was like, okay, stop. Yeah. We need to take something out, you know? Yeah. And, and, and then we, I love just having weird things happening. Like, like Michael Jackson played a lot with effects, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and with his mouth, and it beatboxed a lot mm -hmm. as well as a part of, it was a part of a song. And just play around with different ideas, but, but keep, hold the blues thing there, you know? Yeah. Keep it bluesy, the guitar riffs are heavy and groovy, yeah. and then just play on top of it. Make blues more modern, I think it's my, my goal, who, really. Who, who do you think's pioneering that kind of transition of, um, you know, old school? Because you've got old, old school blues, yeah. like Robert johnson -y kind of old school. Yeah. And then you just had a ton of guitar players from sort of Eric Clapton and Stevie Ray and all that kind of, that took it to another mm. level. And then it's been quite, I think, I think if anything from, from then, the sort of, for me, you've got guys like Joe Bonamassa who mm -hmm. aren't necessarily changing the format of the song, but maybe taking the guitar playing to yeah. another level. Yeah. And then you've got guys like John Mayer who are maybe transitioning the form of blues into maybe more mainstream kind of songs, yeah. if you like. But yeah. who, who do you, you know, who are you listening to and thinking, ah, oh, I like the direction that this person's music's going in? Um, well, as I said, I am not, I don't, guitar heroes for me are difficult. John Mayer, of course, because mm -hmm. he does, he writes amazing songs. He sings well, mm -hmm. plays amazing guitar, and he does all of these things at the same time. That's why I uh, first became a fan of him, because he's played these difficult things and he sings. Mm -hmm. I saw that was possible. But I think, like, when it comes to music that I like, it's R&B. I love R&B. PJ Morton is a guy now who is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love him. Um, and I can, also a lot of great Norwegian artists, Barnhoft. It's you'll, great. You'll have, to, you'll have to send me an email yeah, with some links to these people. I'm like, them. yeah. <laughs> um, but of course, John Mayer has been a very important figure to just take the blues to the next level. Yeah. And, and it's just shown us that it's possible to do it differently, you know? I think that, that's the key, isn't it, really? Yeah. It's not, it's not better or worse, but it is transitioning, isn't it, into something yeah. that's more of a... A different kind of take, I suppose, on sort of blues music. Mm. I, I watch him, as you say, sing and play at the same time. And, mm. and I'm kind of like, I'm sort of school of B.B. King, which is just do your singing bit, then do your playing <laughs> bit, yeah. then do your singing bit, then yeah. and never, ever 
like never ever cross them over and oh. yet he'll play the most ridiculous complex parts and just carry on singing I know how it do was... you how do you manage you know how, how have you managed to practice to get to the point where you can keep a you know reasonably complex pattern going and sing well I I practiced so much and I remember uh, a song that goes like a... we, we know that one right and then you sing on top of that, and I practiced, it, it went super slow. Some of us were hardly ever here. And you learn where to put the words, you know, so right. it becomes a part of you. Yeah. So now I've been playing that song live for 10 years, so now it's, <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. Oh, well, that's, I mean, that, so that's just, it's, it's slow it down and then work out where to accent the word. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And it, which bit do you do you have to learn the melody and the words to the point where you're not thinking about it, so that you can think about the guitar, or are you? Is yeah. it the other? Is it are you just? Is the guitar bit automatic, and you've got to try and remember the words? See, I yeah. I cannot remember the words to any song ever. <laughs> so I think that's one of my biggest problems is I just can't physically remember what to sing. So uh, uh, yeah, that's. <laughs> I would need to have like the words, up, like karaoke, just in case. Yeah, but. of course. <laughs> well, I, that's a good question, actually. I, 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 um, I, I think it's because I need to, I think, I think I'm a better singer than guitar player. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. So I need to be um, so confident in what I'm doing on the guitar, like 100%. Mm -hmm. Because the singing is just automatically. I have never thought about singing. It's just yeah. something I do. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's the way. Is, did, did, have you had as much um, sort of uh, music training on singing as you have guitar, or has singing always been just relatively natural and then most of the, the training has been on the guitar? I have never had any singing lessons, no. I haven't had any guitar lessons either. I started studying music last year, mm -hmm. so I have uh, some yeah, sessions now, but no, I'm, I'm self-taught really. Yeah. Well, look, so we've kind of got up to the album. Yep. I'll put links in the description below where you can go and find it. Um, I struggled to, you know, I was on your Facebook page and also bizarrely on your sister's Wikipedia page going, <laughs> I'm pretty sure this isn't Torah. And then it, and then Pete went, no, that you're it, literally, you can tell it's not Torah because literally the name says Julie, not Torah. And I'm just like, <laughs> as me trying to translate it all from Norwegian into English as well. But anyway, yeah. um, and but of course not speaking Norwegian obviously I have no idea what your Facebook page says yeah. so I've just watched some of the videos on there but it's very cool there's some amazing live performances you playing with Jennifer Batten must have been a blast mustn't it like a yeah. crazy the closest yeah. you're ever going to get to to Michael like a Michael Jackson thing. I know oh that was so wow you I, <laughs> yeah she, she's great we she, Jennifer was here last year and yeah. uh just an absolute sweetheart, really lovely lady, and uh, yeah. great guitar player. You know, yeah. and, and and again, really, I don't think anybody gave her. I think if YouTube and social media and everything had been a bigger thing in that ten years that she had with with Michael, mm. she'd have gone down in history as a way way bigger guitar player and a total. You know, if 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 the world needed uh, a female guitar player to stand up and mm. go you can do the biggest tour in the world playing yeah. all the Van Halen shred parts you know the whole thing it's yeah. just like whilst also dressed in latex with mad hair sticking out the top you know she, she's like she's amazing absolutely she amazing. is amazing and uh, yeah I agree with you mm. I agree with you I, I I thought people everyone knew who she was mm. so when I was going like well I'm gonna jam with Jennifer Batten you know I made a song about it as well okay of cool. course yeah and they were like who that's, you know, that's the problem. That's I think. the problem, and uh, that's weird to me. Yeah, but but that is just you had to be before social media and everything. You had to buy the album and look down the credits and go. So who's the guitar player? Yeah. Now it's just like you know any guitar player in a band like that will have their own website and their own social media page. Oh, and yeah. They'll be doing their and it's like it's so much easier to connect with them. And, yeah. And, um, but that that was super cool. Let's talk about then your journey through gear. That is what we do in Andertons. We sell gear. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've seen you playing uh, a cool white strap, which I think is a vintage 
strat, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And more recently, I know the Chapman guys invited you to, to um, be one of their artists, which was yeah. very nice of them, I think. Very nice. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but other than that, I don't know a great deal about all the other gear that you've kind of come across and that you, you like to use. Yeah. Well, when it comes to my, my pedals, it's um, pretty standard, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I use reverb, delay, yeah. two distortion pedals. Which two? Come on. I have uh, J Rocket, the dude. Very cool. Yeah. I also have the BB preamp exotic. Yeah, yeah. Mid boost. Yep. Uh, I, I'm, I use those together to get mm -hmm. like this wah, wah, wah distortion sound, yeah. which I love. Yeah. I use that all the time. And I have a Boss EQ as well, uh, because sometimes you just get an amp that mm -hmm. doesn't sound the way you want it to. So uh, that works out really good. I have a mini crybaby that I just bought yeah. as well, that I start off with. And that's cool. That's very cool. It's a fun toy. Yeah. 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 How do you are, you, are you finding the whole wah thing? Because that's, that's, that's like, now you've got to remember what the parts are, remember what the words are, <laughs> and remember where to sort of accentuate the kind of the notes on the wah. It's like, oh, I think if you, if, you, if you heard my guitar in solo, if you recorded it live, while I'm doing the wah wah singing and playing, oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh wow, that, that will not be good. It's, it makes no sense. You know, the foot can go like this. Yes. Because I'm singing like this, you know? So. Yeah, I think that's, that's standard, isn't it? Like just, yeah, make the wah wah just kind of go in tempo with the sort of, it's just, yeah, it just doesn't, <laughs> anyway, it's all cool. Yeah. Um, and then it's interesting you say about having to have a pedal board that you can kind of plug into any amplifier. So is mm -hmm. that a challenge for you because you can't take your own guitar amp to most gigs? You have to yeah. just use something that's hired in or? Yeah. So what, what would be your preferred, you know, if you, when you're at home or in the studio, what's your standard amplifier that you use? Oh, you know, I have tried many different amps, but I think it's the Vox. Cool. I, th I think. AC30. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's, I've used that the most while practicing. Mm -hmm. So I've gotten to, to know it so well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we sound good together. <laughs> so. Well, that's, yeah, that's ultimate. That's interesting, yeah. isn't it? So. Because I quite I find the AC30 quite a um, quite an unforgiving yeah. amp. You know, it's it's I like Fenders with lots of reverb and all the mid range taken out because yeah. then it's 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 a very forgiving sound. Mm -hmm. But AC30 is quite dry and you know, but it, mm. you you just it still suits your your tone and your style. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say just what you say. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't choose mm -hmm. the Vox AC, but well. <laughs> yeah, if it's, if it's working for you. Yeah. What's your, I mean, when, when you play, do you, are, are your guitar solos quite, because I'm just, I'm sort of going back to a point we were talking about before, mm -hmm. but I'm, when you mentioned the AC30, and I've seen you play, what the, the jam we did at the beginning was mm -hmm. literally just, I just said, right, I'm, I'm just going to play these three chords, you do whatever you want at the top, boom, mm -hmm. no practice, go. So, you know, clearly you're quite comfortable just jamming. Yeah. But when you're live, do you keep the solos um, how they are on the record and mm -hmm. the same from one night to the next? So, you, you know, you're playing, if you like, a, a prescripted part or are mm. you just, do you just go in with the flow every night and just seeing what you play? Yeah, well, uh, I tried to like uh, play the same thing and uh, as they're on the record, but I have a tendency of going a little bit crazy on stage. So I forget what I'm supposed to do. Right. That's what usually happens. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I just start going blah, 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 whatever and play what I want to play. Uh, but yeah, I think I change it up as often as I can o or else it will get boring for me as well. And mm. also for the band. Yeah. You know, if you hear the same thing, <laughs> like, yeah, when the drummer knows that's where you're going to bend and he goes crash, you know, <laughs> it's not, yeah, you have to keep it alive. Well, that's cool. So let's just finally, so guitar wise, you've, um, what is your guitar collection at the moment? Oh, it's small. It's really? small. Yeah. Well, I have my Chapman, of course, ML3. So that's the, the more of the, more this kind of shape, isn't it? Yeah. More this kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I have the vintage uh, Strat, yeah. Uh, Thomas Blug signature. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I met him in, in Ludwig yeah, as well. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, we jammed together. Yeah. He's super nice. A great player as well. Yeah, I was starstruck once again. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I also have, I bought an Epiphone Dot, mm -hmm. the red one, Yeah. but we're not friends yet. I'm working on it. It's, a big, it's a big guitar, that one, isn't it? The it's sort a of big dot. guitar. You sort of, uh, I sometimes find that unless you're 
Unless you're sort of six foot tall with big broad shoulders, it's just all that a 335 does for you is just make you look even smaller than you already are. I know. I, people laugh at me when I put it on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And I also just to receive them, I don't know how you pronounce it, Alvarez? Yeah, Alvarez? Yeah. Alvarez, yeah. Alvarez, yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Great acoustic, acoustic guitar. Guitars. Blown away. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. So that's my collection. Well, how, how would you like it if uh, Chapman very generously uh, expanded your guitar collection by one? And uh, that's why Sophie's here, basically. So you guys haven't, you probably have met Sophie if you follow Chapman's social media, but Sophie, Sophie. looks after all the artists uh, for yeah. Chapman. And uh, she came up today because they wanted you to have that guitar. So hmm? they wanted you to have that guitar. So that's now your guitar. It was Me? previous. Yes, it's your personal. You no. can you can either take it home with you, or Andertons will ship it back to Norway. But now I'm gonna cry or something. <laughs> what? Well, don't cry. No, it's, Sophie. It's, yeah, it's in fairness. Sophie deserves the uh, Sophie and the guys at Chapman really deserve the uh, credit for that. They heard that you were coming up, and Sophie said, "You know, would you mind if I popped in and we give uh, Tora a new guitar?" So I was like, "Of oh. course." So I've been trying the whole way through the interview. It's just going. Don't forget to give her the guitar. <laughs> Don't forget to give her the guitar. Wow, what to say? Wow, thank you. Oh, that's great. So, I mean, that should complement the uh, the MR3 that you've got. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And uh, yeah, hopefully you get some more cool tones out of that when you get home. You sp <laughs> speechless. I probably shouldn't do this in an interview where I want the artist to actually talk and then you know. No. Well, that's thank cool. You. Well, thank no, you. and. It's, a, it's great with my sort of Chapman hat on and, uh, you know, it's great to be, uh, you know, trying to help you uh, with your continued success. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, I hope all you guys that have watched this will go and check out Tora's band page and Facebook page. Um, now, I will start writing on English from now on, on Facebook. Yes. I think that's a good idea. Yes. Yeah. Or both. Just like alternate the posts. Yeah, true. Because <sighs> don't not be Norwegian. There's a, there's a certain something about your vocal that uh, I think is quite, um, it's got, it, it's nice to listen to, even when you sing, sing in English, it's yeah. got a sort of a, a lilt to it that you only get when you hear a sort of, you know, Scandinavian person kind of singing in English. So don't change that bit. Okay. But absolutely, <laughs> if you're writing on Facebook, yeah, I have no idea of course. what you're saying. I, I, I never thought I would get any followers outside of Norway. Mm -hmm. And I, I still don't think I do. Oh, you definitely will. So I, maybe I should just do that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. You're very welcome. Well, thank you so much for coming in. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you guys, as always, for tuning in and watching another episode of Anderson's TV. Please like and subscribe. And uh, yes, we shall see you in another video soon. Bye bye. <laughs>